Hey friends, sorry it's been a minute. I've not wanted to film because honestly, I've been very sad and upset lately. My house has been delayed for about three months from what we originally anticipated it being completed, which means that instead of moving in October, we are now uh, projected to be moving at the end of January. Also, it's really hard to keep this apartment tidy because it's literally just a big playroom for us. And so behind me is a huge mess, please ignore that. But cleaning it up is just not gonna happen right now, so. Anyways, I wanted to talk a little bit about what happens when you fail the ARRT registry and where to go from that. If you're watching this video, then you have either failed it already and you're like, oh my gosh, what do I do now? Or you anticipate failing and in that case, you should probably just go study some more. <laughs> don't worry about failing until it actually happens, if it does happen. Don't psych yourself out and get into the mindset that you're going to fail before going into your test because that'll set you up for failure essentially and then you're gonna make mistakes that you wouldn't have if you were to be positive about the whole experience of taking the ARRT registry. Once you complete your registry on the computer, there will be a preliminary score that pops up and it shows you, okay, you got a 70%, you failed, you got a 76% and you passed. Um, 75 is that cutoff, so you wanna get above a 75 in order to pass. And if you end up failing, then in the next couple of weeks, you'll receive a letter in the mail. It lays out the different sections that are listed on the registry and a number next to them. Now, the percentages that are next to the different sections will not add up to 100%. Here's an example of what you would receive in the mail if you fail the ARRT registry. I am not in any way associated with the individual that received this report, so I do not know who it is, and it's very generic as to what you may see. Here you will see that they received a 74%, which does result in a fail. You need a 75 in order to pass, and then you can see that in each of these categories, there are 45 questions, 22 questions, 45, 58, and 30. And then their score for each of these sections are 7.8, 8.6, 6.4, 7.1, and 7.9. So an easy way to get your score from these numbers uh, for each section, you would just move this decimal place over one so that is a 78%. This would be an 86%, 64%, 71%, and a 79%. So overall, they didn't do terrible. Obviously, they've almost passed. Really, they need to work on their image acquisition and evaluation and imaging procedures. If you are someone who wants to know how many questions you got right out of these in each section. You can use this equation that I learned in eighth grade that I use too much. <laughs> For radiation protection, you would do x, which is the number of questions you want to know, over the total 45 equals 78 percent, so 78 over 100, and then you cross multiply, which would end up equaling 35.1, so out of 45 questions, 35 were correct. You can use this equation for each one, so x over 22 equals 86 over 100, cross multiply, and you get 18.92. That's about it for understanding your score report once you receive it in the mail. Now, if all of them are pretty low in general. Either A, you need to study everything, start from square one and review it all, or you need to um, work on your test anxiety because that would be a huge reason as to why you're across the board not doing well. A lot of people struggle with test anxiety and it sucks. 
you, whenever you go into a Pearson View Center to take your registry, you don't get a room to yourself. Even if you had testing accommodations in college, if for say you were diagnosed with ADHD and you brought your letter to the college and then the college provided you with testing accommodations where you were allowed to test by yourself and um, you didn't have any distractions around you, those accommodations do not uh, carry over to the Pearson View Center. You literally have to have a like physical disability to have testing accommodations for the ARRT and there's information on their website about what they will accommodate and the different forms that you have to submit prior to scheduling in order to get those accommodations. So don't assume that if you're receiving accommodations at the college level that it will carry over to the Pearson View Centers um, <laughs> because that's kind of upsetting when, surprise, it's not what you expected. You have three attempts to pass your registry, to get a 75 or above on the registry. Only three tries. Now, if you fail on the third try, you would have to repeat the entire program to receive another three tries. What made me really upset is that I was going through um, different career fields, like sonography has similar rules where they have three shots to pass their registries, um, from what I hear. But nurses can take their NCLEX up to eight times a year, and there's no cap on it. So they must be like really hurting for nurses to be able to pass if they're giving them that many tries to succeed. I'm real nervous. <laughs> nurses also have a rule where there has to be 45 days in between each time that they test which is why it turns out to be eight times a year um, because of that 45 day increment that they have to wait in between. But like eight times a year? That's insane. We get three. <laughs> so hit the books. If you have failed two times, what I have suggested in the past before realizing something, I suggested, okay, after you take your registry, go and brain dump. Think about every question that you had on the test, any questions that you had that you thought, man, I don't know this answer, so I need to go look it up. Look it up. It doesn't just go away. Now, there are so many questions in the question bank that the registry has that it is really unlikely that you're gonna see the same test over again. It's really unfortunate because you can go through and think, man, I remember half the test. I have all of these questions that I wrote down and I can prepare for those and bring it into the second try and I'll get at least 50% better. No, no. You can go in on your second try and it'll be a completely different test. I don't mean to say that to scare you. I just mean that have the mentality that you're not gonna see the same question again. However, if you understand the concept of what that question is asking, then you'll be able to apply it to different questions that are similar. If you did poorly on every section in the registry, start from square one. It took me about two weeks to tutor somebody, starting from uh, how do you take a hand x-ray to more advanced physics. We went through the entire two-year program in two weeks. We spent about two hours a day going over everything, and they ended up passing on their third try because of doing that. I think that they improved their score by about 8%, um, and so they passed and they're working now, thank God. That's exactly what we had to do though in order to remember everything that you forgot through the past two years. A lot of people, whenever they come out of the registry, they say, oh my gosh, there were so many questions on blank. I have found that people who say that they have so many questions in one certain area, that's actually the area that they just do the least well on, and they're spending more time on those questions because they have to think about it more. So although it seems like the test is weighed one way or another, all of the questions are equal. You can look up the question, you can look up the different amount of questions that are within each section on the ART website, 
but if you're spending 20 minutes on physics questions and only five minutes on positioning questions, you're gonna feel like there are so many more physics questions even though they're equivalent in the number of questions that are asked. I hope that makes sense. Now I've mentioned in my previous ART registry video about understanding the concepts of things rather than answering questions over and over and over. So I've heard of Rad Tech Bootcamp being a really good resource to use and watching their videos have helped many people. So I would suggest doing that but don't get caught up in answering all of those mock registry questions and really answering them just to get the right answer to that question. A lot of these programs will have a description as to why this is the correct answer below it. And I would suggest absolutely reading that and making sure that you understand it before moving on to the next question and not just saying like, okay, I got that question right, I can move on because I guarantee that question is not gonna show up on the registry, but will you need to know the information that is within that question? Absolutely. That's where the disconnect is because students will go through. They want to be able to say, I got it right, I'm good, and I can move on. And even though you got it right, you actually need to understand why it's correct. As I mentioned, if you fail the registry, you'll get a paper in the mail laying out how you did throughout the test. Do not wait until you get that paper to start studying. I know of an individual who said, well, I don't even know what to start studying because I haven't gotten that paper yet to tell me how I did in each section. Well, you could be wasting some very precious time waiting one or two weeks for that paper to come in prior to starting your studying again. Don't get out of the habit of picking up your books and reviewing things, especially when the test is fresh in your mind and you're already in that mindset of being a student. And although it's scary, don't wait too long before taking the test again. So nurses have that 45 day rule from taking one test to the next, one NCLEX to the next NCLEX. And I think that that, like, m that time frame might work out for somebody who had failed the ART registry as well. If you do fail the registry, there's no time limit. As soon as you fail it and that those results go and get published for ART, then you're able to uh, re-register and take the test again. So it could take two weeks, three weeks before you're able to set up your next time to go and, tr and try again. So some people will want to wait longer than two to three weeks. <laughs> but if you wait longer than 45 days, yeah, I think that you're gonna start losing um, motivation to study. You're gonna start losing the knowledge that you have because at this point you're not applying it anymore. Once you graduate and you finish clinicals, a lot of uh, future radiographers are no longer actually actively using their skills in the hospitals because they're no longer students and they're just waiting to take the registry. So I would utilize that time, that eight hours, three days a week that you're not spending at clinicals, open up a book, study. I know that a lot of you guys are working and I've dealt with that in the past too, like working, going to school, I'm still going to school and working, and uh, it is exhausting, but it's temporary, and you can do it. You can put forth the effort. If you have specific questions on, like, oh my gosh, Sydney, I don't understand transformers, like, let me know. All right, I'll make a video on transformers, love that. However, all of my notes are in a box right now because I'm moving, and uh, I will have to like wait until I can unpack my notes so that I can tell you accurately and make sure that you have the proper information that you need to know about certain things. So it might be a minute, I'm supposed to be moving in January, so fingers crossed, 
I'll be able to get a video out for you guys who have specific questions like that soon. Let me know if you have any questions. Work on your test anxiety because that's absolutely huge. That affects a lot of people and especially not knowing what you're getting into as far as the environment. I wonder if Pearson View Centers will allow you to like go in to tour the center or like to look at the center before taking your test because there are steps that you go through in order to take a test there. And that can be really anxiety provoking in addition to actually taking the test that could change the future of your life. It's fine. Work on your breathing, give your eyes a break. I took probably five or 10 minutes in the middle of my test to literally sit back from my computer, close your eyes, take off all of your ear stuff that's blocking all the noise and just give yourself a little break. My husband and I had this mantra that we always say, it'll work out because it has to. If you want this badly enough, then you will put in the effort to pass next time. If you're on your third try and you're like, this is it, this is, my whole world is crumbling down, this is gonna be the end of me if I don't pass this next time, Listen, you have graduated college with an associate's degree. Doors are still going to be open for you if you don't pass the ART registry. You still have the degree, you still have knowledge, you still have patient experience. You have skills that you didn't have before that you can apply to a new career, even if it's not in radiology. And I know that would be extremely upsetting and we don't wanna think of that, but if you have a backup plan in your head, then you can go in being a little less stressed out that your whole life isn't writing on this test. And I know that it's hard to come to that conclusion for yourself, and I know that you'd be really disappointed in yourself if you didn't pass, but it's not the end of the world. There's a lot of other things to live for, you know? Anyways, got a little bit too deep there. I hope that something in this video helped you feel better about retaking the registry. I hope that if you haven't even taken the registry yet, that this doesn't scare you because you should not make yourself nervous by watching this before taking the registry. A lot of people have been asking me, how do they become registered if they went to radiology school in a different country? I will have a website here that you can go to for questions like that for international students. Um, and I'll try to link it. I don't know how to do all that fancy stuff yet, but I'll try to do that for anyone who is outside of America. I'm gonna go x-ray some kids now. So I will see you guys next time. Good luck and stay calm. See ya.